Hi, everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about a concept called linear approximation. Um, linear approximation, or tangent line approximation, is the idea of using the equation of the tangent line to approximate values of any function f of x for some value x that's near x equals a. So what does all of that mean? Here's a visual representation. So this curve here is the function y equals f of x. And let's just say I want you to determine the value of the function when x is equal to a. So when I'm asking you for the value of the function, I'm asking you for the y value. So if the x value is a, I'm asking you to calculate f of a or the y value. Now, in current day, you would take the function if I gave you the equation, you'd put it in the calculator, you'd look at the table and say, okay, when x is this value, look at find it and find the y values. But, you know, calculus is a little bit of an older math, which says we don't need a calculator for this. What we could do instead is use the tangent line. So if you find the equation of this line here, which is tangent to it, at specifically x equals a, then we can just plug into the equation of the tangent line to find the y value. Because at this exact point, those values are the same, right? This y value is the same both on the curve and the tangent line. So here's how it's going to work. Here's an example. So let's just say I give you the function f of x equals the square root of x. And I'm asking you to find the linearization of the function at x equals 1. Basically, what that means to do is I want you to find the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1. So when I'm saying linearization, I'm meaning find the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1. So to do that, we always have two things, right? An equation of a line, we need a point and a slope. So I'm going to go ahead and label this part A. So remember that to get a point, we use the original function, f of x. And to get a slope, we have to use the derivative function, f prime of x. So the point, if my original function here, I'll highlight in yellow, is f of x is the square root of x. I want to find the value at x equals 1. So I'm going to plug 1 into my original value. So we know the square root of 1 is just 1. So the point is 1 comma 1. Now if I want to find the slope, I need to take the derivative of f of x, which is here. So I'm going to write f of x in a different form so that I can take the derivative. We know that the square root of x is the same thing as saying x to the 1 half. So if I do that, it makes it easier to take the derivative. So f prime of x, take the 1 half, bring it in front, keep the x, and decrease the power by 1. So remember, when you do 1 half minus 1, you'll get negative 1 half. So now from here, I'm going to plug in 1 again. So 1 half, 1 to the negative 1 half. So take a minute, plug that into your calculators. Technically, you shouldn't have a calculator, but you can. Plug it in, get an answer, and hit resume when you're ready. Okay, so you should have gotten 1 half. And you really don't need a calculator for it because 1 to any power, whether it's positive, negative, or a fraction, 1 to any power is always going to be 1. So 1 times a half gives me a half. So this gives me my slope, right? M is slope. So M is equal to 1 half. So if we put this all together to find the equation, we know we have y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So the x1 and y1 happen to be the same. So y minus 1 equals my slope, which is a half, x minus x1. So this is my equation of the tangent line at x equals 1. Now, what's the point in all this? I want to use this to find the estimate of the square root of 1.1. So the question will ask you, given this, 
use your linearization to estimate the square root of 1.1. If I don't have a calculator, how can I do it? So basically, I want to show you a, a graph of what you just did. So you found, if I have a graph of y equals the square root of x, it looks like this. And when x is equal to 1, we know that y is equal to 1. We just found that out here. So x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. So it's pretty much close there. So what we just did is we found the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1. So this line is my tangent line. And that tangent line is what we found here. So if I want to use that tangent line, it's pretty close to where 1.1 would be. 1.1 would be so close to 1 that we theoretically could use this same tangent line because it's so close to it that we can use it as an approximation of the value. So all we have to do is plug now into our tangent line the 1.1 and we're done. So part B is you're going to plug 1.1 into tangent line 4x. So the equation is y minus 1 equals 1 half x minus 1. So 1.1 is going to go in for x and minus 1. And let's just solve, right? So y minus 1, 1 half, 1.1 1 .1 take away 1 is just 0.1. And technically you can do this by hand, but you could also pl plug it into the calculator. So let's get this value and then hit resume when you're ready. All right, so you should have gotten 0.05. And then all we have to do is add 1 to both sides, and we have our answer. So y is equivalent to 1.05. So that's what we got for our estimate. Now, what we can do next in part c is we can actually calculate the error in using this method, because obviously this method is not foolproof. So if I want to calculate the error, I need to find the actual value of what it should be and what the measured value is. So the actual value is the value that you would get if you would plug it into the calculator. The measured value is what we just got. So here's the formula for percent error, and let's do that. So we'll call this part C. So let's find the actual first. So the equation is f of x is equal to the square root of x. And I want to find what it is at 1.1. So the square root of 1.1. Now, if you put that into the calculator, you're going to get a decimal. So I'm just going to say let's leave it in this form now, and we can round it later. Now, the measured is our estimate that we just got here. So 1.05. So the formula is the absolute value of the actual minus the measured over the actual. And then we obviously have to multiply it by 100 to get a percentage. So my actual is the square root of 1.1 minus my measured 1.05. Must take that absolute value so it remains positive dividing by our actual, which is the square root of 1.1, and then multiplying by 100. So take a minute, pause the video, type this whole thing into the calculator, and hit resume when you're ready for the answer. All right, so what I got was 0.11357. So that's perfect. Um, it's a really, really small percentage. Now you can keep going if you want, but that is as close as we're going to get. I mean, we probably could get closer, but I mean, I feel like that's a pretty good um, percent error. We're off by 0.11357, which is, you know, close to a, uh, one tenth being off. So our linear approximation is pretty accurate. All right, so I think we'll do the rest of this tomorrow in class. So don't stress about doing it. If you want to try it, feel free, um, but we'll continue this tomorrow. All right, have a good night.